Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see everyone. If you have your Bibles, um, open it to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 11 uh, to verse 26 and uh, hold your finger there. We have had a number of uh, very significant events take place in the course of this last week, and in particular, uh, they've all kind of um, come to a head even today. Uh, And in fact, you know, Israel is eight hours ahead of us, and so this morning about midday, uh, events and announcements that were being made in Israel today, um, there were several uh, very powerful news stories that came out. And uh, the crisis of whether or not uh, Israel, or excuse me, whether Israel is going to attack Iran, whether or not the United States is going to attack Iran, whether or not Iran is ever going to be stopped from developing a nuclear weapon is basically coming to the head in Israel. In fact, in Israel, all this week have been major public debates about whether or not Israel should go alone and attack Iran or not. Of course, with all of those public statements being made, Iran has been making some of the most ugly and uh, unbelievable statements against Israel this week, repeatedly uh, at all levels of the Iranian government calling for the annihilation and uh, wiping Israel off the map. You know, what we had heard earlier before that was kind of, you know, here in the American press, they were saying, well, he didn't really quite mean that. Uh, based on the statements that are coming out of Iran this week and now, there is no doubt uh, that their program to get a nuclear weapon is for the express purpose of wiping Israel out. And it's now, you know, kind of the, the camos off the, the paint job and everything is now uh, very visible to be seen. And at the same time, it is also now very visible by everyone to see that President Obama does not want to have a war with Iran under any circumstances. Uh, the staging of political uh, military forces in the Persian Gulf appear to be very tough. Apparently it was, you know, like they used to say back uh, in the Cold War, a big, gigantic paper tiger. Uh, clearly, uh, President Obama does not want to have a war before the election. Uh, but Israel, of course, feels extremely threatened by Iran, and there is a major, major uh, debate going on. For the last two years, uh, Netanyahu and the Israeli government have, uh, have expressed this concern to the world that um, a window, there is only a certain window of opportunity to be able to stop Iran uh, in its nuclear weapon ambitions, and that their argument is that that window is coming to a close at the end of this year. In fact, the assessment in Israel is that if Israel is going to have anything to do with stopping Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, they must take decisive action before the end of this year. Now, uh, the United States, um, under the leadership of President Obama, doesn't want to have that. Uh, They keep trying to, you know, as much as they're trying to, um, Iran is trying to delay the world so they can build a nuclear weapon. (laughs) President Obama is trying to do everything he can to delay Israel from attacking uh, in the hopes that uh, somehow we can just kind of get through this. Um, I think that President Obama and uh, some of the administration believes that uh, it's tolerable and that Iran, we can live in a world with Iran having a nuclear weapon. Um, we live in a world with North Korea having a nuclear weapon, and we seem to be able to get along with that. That's part of the argument that's being made. But I would remind everybody that North Korea is not standing up and vowing every time they get a chance to speak that they're intending to wipe Japan off the map. Um, and only, Whereas in the case of Iran, they're standing up and saying they're intending to wipe Israel off the map um, every opportunity they get. I, uh, I think the president would feel differently about this if he would finally make a trip to Israel and maybe set up the, you know, the, the White House and run the United States government from, say, like Tel Aviv you know, for the next 60 days. And I think he'd get a different feeling about what the threat from Iran is really all about. Uh, but I don't think he's going to do that uh, at all. 
Now, in the midst of all of that taking place today, um, there's so many statements that are so profound that have come out with regard to this. Let me just remind you of a couple of them. There's an assessment that's come out that says Iran will have the pieces to build a bomb October 1. That's the latest intelligence assessment. October 1. Think, think about that for a moment. Now, there's great concern with Israel that we don't even give them that chance to do that. And by the way, President Obama is pledged publicly to never permit Iran to be able to do it. And yet at the same time, while he says those words, uh, he turns around and won't take decisive action, won't make a decisive decision with regard to dealing with Iran and coordinating it with Israel. Israel uh, recently uh, repeated the fact that President George W. Bush also swore that he would never permit North Korea to get a nuclear weapon. And the United States slid right through that and basically backed off, and North Korea did get nuclear weapons. And uh, so you can understand Israel's uh, concern that the United States could follow suit and do the same thing with regard to Iran. I don't normally do this, but this article was so excellent. Uh, I'm going to read an actual article that came out. This is from the Israel Times. This was published today um, here about noontime. And uh, I think succinctly describes the situation going on between Iran, the United States, and Israel. And with your permission, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. This is, again, from the Israel Times, dated today. Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Ehud Barak have almost finally decided on an Israeli strike at Iran's nuclear facilities this fall, and a final decision will be taken soon. Israel main TV news broadcast reported on Friday evening. That's today. Channel 2 News, the country's leading news program, devoted much of its Friday night broadcast to the issue, detailing the pros and cons that it said have taken Netanyahu and Barak to the brink of approving an Israeli military attack despite opposition from the Obama administration from many Israeli security chiefs. By the way, President Obama in the United States is interfering into the uh, internal affairs of the state of Israel, trying to recruit every voice they can to counter uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, and the decisions need to be made in Israel. I'm telling you right now that if Israel did the same thing in this country, we would have a fit of the internal meddling into our political affairs. But the United States of America, under the leadership of Barack Obama, feels it is his right to go meddle with the people inside of Israel to sow discord against their own government. Just because it doesn't conform to his, his stature of what he wants done. Critically, the station's diplomatic correspondent, Udi Siegel, said Israel does not believe that the U.S. will take military action as Iran closes in on the bomb. The U.S., the TV report said, has not provided Israel with details on an attack plan. President Obama has not promised to attack Iran if all else fails. Conditions cited by Defense Secretary Leon Panetta for an American attack do not calm Israeli concerns. And Obama has a record of seeking U.N. and Arab League approval before action. All these factors in Jerusalem's mind underline the growing conviction of Netanyahu and Barak that Israel will have to tackle Iran alone, the TV reported said. Israel's leaders have also noted that President George W. Bush vowed repeatedly that North Korea would not be allowed to attain a nuclear weapons capability, a vow that proved empty. Obama does not want to intervene militarily because the presidential elections in November and it is doubtful that he would act afterwards runs the Israeli assessment the TV report said. Obama may believe that the U.S. can live with a nuclear Iran, but Israel cannot. The report quoted those in Netanyahu's circle as saying. Um, as for the presidential challenger, Mitt Romney, he takes a more forceful position, but would probably not have the domestic support necessary to act in the first year of his presidency if elected. After that, it would be too late. The U.S. can live with Iran as a breakout state on the edge of attaining a bomb. The report said the prime minister's circle believes, but Israel, a breakout state, 
uh, for Israel, a breakout state, is a nuclear state. Netanyahu, for his part, is convinced that thwarting Iran amounts to the thwarting of a plan to destroy the Jewish people. And Channel 2 Siegel said the prime minister considers Iran's spiritual leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, to be acting rationally in order to achieve fanatical goals. Siegel said that when considering the imperative to attack, Netanyahu and Barak reason that we have reached the moment of truth, after which it would be too late to stop Iran, and that the price of attack is far lower than the price of inaction. It will be a matter of a few months before it's too late, Siegel said. Before that, that is, Israel will be immune from damage by an Israeli strike. The TV report cited intelligence information suggesting that Iran is much further ahead than previous thought in its uranium enrichment, and in other words, of its nuclear weapons program. Siegel said Israel's capacity to impact the Iranian program was dwindling and the window of opportunity was closing. Four years ago, he said, an Israeli strike could have set the program back two to four years. A year from now, an Israeli strike would have negligible impact. Netanyahu was reported to have said in a private conversation that if no one attacks, Iran will get the bomb, underlining that he does not believe sanctions will thwart Tehran. The extensive TB report detailed what is said was the Israeli leadership's dual thinking on the military, diplomatic, and economic consequences of an Israeli strike and the consequences of Iran getting the bomb. Militarily, an Israeli strike would prompt missile attacks on Israel, attacks by Hamas and Hezbollah from the south and the north, and upheaval on the Arab street in, leadership, in, the, in the leadership's assessment. The assessment is that Syria's President Bashar Assad would not get involved since this would finish him off, the report said. But if Iran got the bomb, the missile threat would be escalated. Hamas and Hezbollah further empowered, and there would be danger of any crisis escalating into a nuclear crisis. Let me repeat what he just said. The danger of any crisis in Israel, with Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran, it could escalate into a nuclear crisis. By, what, by that, what that means is that Israel is the only one with operational nuclear weapons, and they might have to use them. That's right. Diplomatically, an Israeli strike would prompt a confrontation with the U.S., global protests, international isolation for Israel, delegitimization, and a situation in which Israel was seen as the aggressor. But if Iran got the bomb, Israel would be defeated and humiliated diplomatically and would become a liability to the U.S., the TV report said Israel's two key leaders believe. Economically. An Israeli strike would deepen the economic slowdown and lead to a suspension of foreign investment. An Iranian bomb would end foreign investment in Israel, however, and prompt an exodus of Israel's best brains. Netanyahu and Barak were said to believe that an Israeli military strike, though opposed by Washington, would not shatter ties with the U.S. Survey figures that have impacted their thinking suggests significant U.S. support for an American and for an Israeli strike on Iran, the TV report. In other words, they're saying the government might get upset with Israel, but the American people would still support Israel. Israel would not be planning to draw the U.S. into a war with Iran by striking Iran's nuclear facilities, the report said, and Israel does not believe an attack would prompt regional war. I disagree with that. I, I think there's more to that. The TV report made much of a recent speech by Netanyahu at the scene of Sunday's terror attack thwarted by Israel at the Gaza-Egypt-Israel border. Visiting the area on Monday, Netanyahu said Israel must and can only rely on itself to safeguard its security. It becomes clear time after time that when it comes to the safety of all Israeli citizens, Israel uh, must and can rely only on itself. No one can fulfill this role except the IDF and different Israeli security forces of Israel, and we will continue to conduct ourselves in this way. 
Now, going hand in hand with that, that's a pretty good assessment of politically how the thing is viewed uh, in Jerusalem and what the thinking of the Israeli leadership. There's another report that came out that should there be a war, that yes, the U.S. would find themselves, they are already committed to defending against m missile strikes, but nothing else. In other words, if Iran does not strike U.S. forces, the only commitment that the U.S. has that would be, that would be maintained is the Aegis-class cruiser setting in the Persian Gulf. If, if, if uh, Iran launched ICBMs toward Israel, they would be, they're duty-bound to shoot those down. However, they, that, the U.S. is not going to do a thing about Hezbollah attacking or ha Hamas attacking um, Israel in that particular case. You heard uh, last week there was a, a thing I shared with you. It was kind of fascinating because it seemed out of place. Well, we finally have the explanation this week is what's going on. Saudi Arabia apparently, quote, sent a message through the U.S. to tell uh, Israel, don't fly your jets across Saudi airspace. We'll shoot them down if you go to attack Iran. Apparently, that statement wasn't really given to the U.S. Apparently, that statement got leaked out because the Saudi Arabia had a meeting with Iran. And in the course of the meeting with Iran, Saudi Arabia was basically telling Iran, look, uh, we think Israel's going to nail you. We're, we're not supporting Israel, and so you better not attack us. In other words, if, if, if you get hit by the Israelis, you better not launch any missiles over and attack either the U.S. bases here in Saudi Arabia or attack uh, forces. Now, it's kind of a velvet hammer approach uh, because um, uh, the Iranians responded back and they said, okay, well, you block the Israelis from flying across your space and, and we'll agree to do that. But then um, the Saudis also added the following. If you do attack us and you do attack U.S. bases that are in Saudi Arabia and so forth, we, the Saudis, will unleash our entire military force and we will tell you exactly the target we're going after. They said they were going to go after Karg Island. Karg Island is the, is the entire international oil uh, export terminal uh, for Iran that loads up all the ships in the Persian Gulf for all the ships that, so uh, Iran can sell oil to the rest of the world. That's an island setting off the coast of Iran, and it's well within the range of Saudi Arabia, and they said that if you touch us, we're going to burn that thing to the ground, and you'll never be able to use it. Well that would shut Iran down from being able to sell oil to anybody. Uh, that would definitely cripple uh, the nation for that, stop them economically. That's what was going on there last. Now that goes hand in hand with, apparently, and this is, shows you the extent of some of the people who disagree in Israel against the idea of attacking Iran and are trying to cater to President Obama's interest, they're doing, as you've heard before, the president has leaked intelligence uh, against Israel at various times to blunt their attack plans. That's what this memo is all about. This is now the Israeli attack plan to hit Iran, and this is the details I'm going to read to you. This came out in the press. It's been secretly leaked. Here's the plan. The Israeli attack will open with a, uh, with a coordinated strike, including an unprecedented cyber attack, which will totally paralyze the Iranian regime. The aim is to shut down all communications between the Iranian government and the military, leaving the country's leadership in the dark about what is happening at key installations and bases. Carbon fiber munitions would be employed to shut down the country's electrical grid. They'll blow up every power plant in, in Iran. Meanwhile, a barrage of tens of ballistic missiles would be launched from Israel toward Iran. Uh, these, are not air these are not pilot. These are pilotless uh, cruise missiles. These would be fired by Israeli submarines from the Persian Gulf against Iranian nuclear facilities at Iraq, Isfahan, Fordo, and elsewhere. They would be supplemented by a barrage of hundreds of cruise missiles aimed at destroying the regime's command and control capacity decapitating Iran's nuclear and missile development program, targeting the residents of senior personnel. These attacks would be followed up by Israeli Air Force planes carrying out airstrikes against targets which require further assault. 
Clearly, such an assault would inflict massive civilian casualties while plunging the entire region into chaos. Now, Israel believes that there will be a retaliation, and uh, you also heard this week a new change in leadership uh, in Israel, a very key position. It is like, it's called homeland defense. Um, like our homeland defense thing here deals with terrorist attacks against them. Well, the government of Israel uh, built a homeland defense organization here in the last two years, very controversial. And the guy who's been in charge, of it, he's responsible for making sure all the bomb shelters are working, that they're stocked correctly, that there's emergency procedures for evacuation, emergency procedures for police, for fire, for medical personnel. Uh, and they've been trying to figure out how to protect um, all of the Israeli citizens where in Tel Aviv, all the bomb shelters, all of the possible bomb shelters protects less than 40% of the citizens that live in Tel Aviv. So they've been working very hard on doing that. And um, that fellow who was in charge of that, been working for the last two years, a very famous fellow in Israel, he just got an appointment to be the ambassador to China um, at the end of his career, and they just brought in a new fellow. And this new fellow um, is um, a very high esteem, very trusted, and it's very obvious uh, is in support of Netanyahu, and this would tip the scales within the inner cabinet for the decision probably to authorize war by Israel. As a result, that's the decision-making mechanism. The inner cabinet uh, with Netanyahu and Barak is the one that makes the decision. A lot of concern about that because they think that new appointment tips the scales in Netanyahu's favor. Uh, the previous Homeland Defense fellow, he made an unbelievable statement this week in departing. He said that Israel is ready for war, that the country is ready to protect its people, and that should there be a full-blown missile war that's estimated to last about 30 days, that they could keep the casualties in Israel to below 500. Well that uh, was kind of misinterpreted. Uh, what he was trying to do was to calm the fears of the, of, the, of the people, to tell Israel and their citizens that the government has truly prepared for you and is ready to help and support the people. Well, what that also sent was a signal was that Israel, that's no longer a factor keeping Israel back from launching the attack. And that just kind of went over the top. All of a sudden now, the idea that Israel could be attacking um, Iran is, is over, it, everybody believes it. And in fact, in the United States, they believe it very strongly. The president, interestingly enough, who has not been having much communication with Israel whatsoever, all of a sudden called up and said, requested a meeting with Netanyahu September 18th. Um, in anticipation for the U.N. meetings, uh, the U.N. General Assembly of meetings in New York, has requested to have uh, an audience with Netanyahu. I'm certain that the president wants to find a way to talk Israel out of, out of doing anything. And in fact, there's already a trial balloon that's already been popped uh, that the president will swear that um, the United States will attack Iran in June of next year if, uh, if negotiations fail. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, the, the initial report back was from uh, the Israeli government was that they agreed to the meeting, but they also kind of served notice of, we don't believe you, which is the best thing they could have done. And uh, so right now, the pressure is now, uh, the ball's been kind of hit back to uh, uh, President Obama. And to the extent of, Mr. President, it, it's time for you to prove that you're serious about Iran. And by the way, Israel is saying, we might consider delaying an attack if the United States would now implement severe sanctions not setting up phony sanctions and then giving everybody in the world a waiver 
uh, but severe sanctions and issue an ultimatum to Iran that the United States is going to take them to task militarily if they don't do it. Because right now, Iran does not believe that the U.S. will attack them. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's, that's, that's the situation where we're at. Um, just stepping back for a moment, I, I'm kind of an amateur strategy and tactics guy. I, I, I've studied worldwide conflicts, wars, how wars get started and all that kind of stuff, and um, studied um, military science. The, the, the worst thing, the absolute worst thing, from a pure strategic standpoint of warfare, world warfare, is when the enemy doesn't believe you. When they don't believe you, that's when they make stupid decisions. And then things happen that you didn't plan on. Right now, Iran does not believe the United States. They don't believe that a President Obama has the will uh, right, to do this. Israel does not believe that the United States has the will. And I don't care how many times Joe Biden stands up and says that President Obama is a big, tough guy. I, for what it's worth, I don't believe him either. Of course, I don't really count, you know, in this equation. But um, I don't understand how anybody could believe him uh, with regard to this. So here's what it comes down to. There are people right now that believe that the attack, the decision for Israel to attack, is probably being made in the inner cabinet right now. I think there's probably one last thing that will keep Israel from attacking, and that is if the President of the United States will get serious about Iran and make an ironclad statement to attack Iran if they don't yield, give a real ultimatum. I don't believe he'll do it. I just don't believe he will. I think, uh, let me give you a couple of reasons why. One, I don't think he has it in the fiber in his backbone to do that. And number two, I think his eagle will rise up and he'll say, I'm not going to have my foreign policy dictated to me by Israel. So, come before the election, you know, in the month of October, it looks like the time frame. Now, I've, you've heard me say to you before, the speculation in the Middle East, this is from Saudi Arabia and other nations, that the war will be coming around October 1st and the first part of October, which coincides, of course, with the Feast of Tabernacles this year. From a thematic, spiritual thematic standpoint, you couldn't pick a better time uh, for this hugely prophetic war uh, to take place. So that is an assessment as we speak at this point. The tensions between the United States and uh, Israel are probably at the peak of that they have ever been. Um, Israel is getting tough. And I'm certain that the president does not want um, Israel attacking Iran before the election. You know why? What that would do to the president. That doesn't permit him to go out campaigning. He would have to stick around Washington, D.C., stick around his military people and stay on top. Because if he, out cam if he goes out campaigning, and there's a regional war going on, the American citizens are going to say, Mr. President, what are you doing here campaigning when our American forces are engaged in a regional war? Why aren't you in Washington, D.C. as the commander-in-chief taking responsibility? That is the reason why he doesn't want the war. It's going to mess up his campaign schedule and his fundraising schedule. Okay? And he probably thinks that if he has to prosecute a war with Iran, he can't make enough money, can't persuade enough votes, he might lose the election. So that's the reason why that whole business about the election is, is, is such a cynical component in this, in this whole thing. 
And that's the reason why I believe that Israel is right in assessing that President Obama is not going to be taking action against Iran. Let's pray for the situation that's going on in the world for Israel and for uh, what's going on with our own nation and our own president. Father, you know um, all of the situation in the Middle East. You know about our president, about the leaders in Israel, the leaders in Iran, all of the different nations, and you know uh, what is even getting ready to happen. We're trusting, Lord, that as these events unfold, as these dominoes fall, that your perfect will would be implemented, and that above all, that you would vindicate and protect Israel uh, from their enemies, and that you would blunt the plans of the enemies of Israel. We ask that you would protect the Israeli citizens, the general people there. We ask you to protect the U.S. forces that are stationed all throughout the Middle East to potentially be in danger's way against Iran and Hezbollah and Hamas. We ask God that you would fulfill your good word and your prophecies, that you would bring these circumstances about so that, as the prophet Joel has said, that the world would take a step back and suddenly realize that there is a God in the midst of Israel and that there are no other gods, that you are the one true God in this whole business. We can see many, many alarming and ominous things coming to our nation, to all the nations of the world, Lord. The world appears to be about to burst at the seams. We trust you, Lord, in the midst of all of that trauma and all that trouble, to, as you've said, to neither leave us nor forsake us, and that you will deliver us. We trust you for your words, Lord. We don't know how you work it all out, but we'll let you take care of the details on that. In the meantime, keep us strong, keep Israel strong and alert, and um, guide the watchmen that are on the walls uh, of our nation and the nation of Israel. We ask it in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our coming King. Amen.